got a new patron page. <laughs> yeah, boy. Yep, boys and gals, I have my new patron page set up, and if you check my goals, you will get discouraged to donate. But you know what they say a warrior does not give up what he loves, he finds the love in what he does. <laughs> or was it warriors should suffer their pain silently? Never mind, just cue the video. Alright guys, let's see what are the top 10 tips and tricks in villagers and heroes. As in my first video explaining why you should play villagers and heroes in 2019, I feel the need of mentioning it in further detail here as well. You can play the game on both mobile and PC devices only if you have downloaded the standalone client from the main website. You cannot play from both devices if you have downloaded the game through Steam and no, you cannot transfer your character from Steam to the standalone client. Probably you can if you file a support ticket, but so far I haven't heard of such an option, so be careful. With that said, you can play on your PC while you're at home and use your mobile device to play when you're at work, school, heck, somewhere else. You can pick your plants and handle your livestock while outside so you can really get those scanners going. Nice. It is recommended you rebirth your character as soon as it is available. First rebirth is on level 30 and you can watch my how to rebirth video to see how you can complete the process. Of course, you can go backwards and complete your first rebirth on level 90, but it is not as effective and it will probably make you feel annoyed to go back after grinding so much. Not to mention that after each rebirth you get additional points to spend, plus a major XP boost that lasts until you hit the threshold on which you completed a rebirth. Pair that with some XP granting items and you will literally blink through the whole content and get powerful at the same time. I'll be back. Villages act as guilds in Villagers and Heroes. Or rather act as a secondary guild. Join a village as soon as possible, right after you complete the quest which you get in the first starting area, Summer's Hollow. It doesn't really matter which village you will pick, but I would recommend if you're planning on being serious and join a guild to actually check with the guild itself if they're not located in a selected village. Joining the village as well unlocks to you possibilities of completing villaging activities that you would not normally have the chance doing if you're a newly created village with just one or two people around. Zogs are special items that drop from killing mobs. Normally, they are separated in four different categories and are considered as common, uncommon, rare and ultra rare. When you collect five of them, you will be able to redeem them at the Zog Redeemer located in Trader's Path. Rewards vary from emeralds and diamonds to random elixirs or even crowns, the in-game currency which you purchase stuff from the crown shop. Needless to say, this happens only on ultra rare Zogs. Bear in mind that redeeming Zogs also unlocks achievements for all those of you completionists out there granting further rewards. Following the main storyline, we'll really get to show you the game properly. If you're into lore, know that the script is not written like the last season of Game of Thrones. Best season ever! <laughs> An actual screenplay writer has written the storyline and quests with witty dialogue and hilarious lines. The lore is incredible and will hook you up as to what is going on with the world and the characters you're interacting with. Not long enough and you will also get your first mount as a reward for completing a part of the main storyline so you might want to stick around and not just rush to grinding mobs. Pies. Yeah, pies. Dude. Pies grant bonus XP in Villagers and Heroes. This means that if you pair that with the Rebirth system and if you choose Sunken Tooth as your starting zone, you will really go fast in the game in terms of XP. If you wonder why Sunken Tooth, you can watch my other videos showcasing all starting zones and their respective buffs. Pies are free to craft 
and you don't need to be maximum level to craft them. They do not require you to have massive amounts of ingredients, nor piles of gold, so... What are you waiting for? DO IT! Bounty bosses provide you with XP plus some rewards after killing a number of them. Normally, each day, you will be having an icon on your hotbar telling you how many bosses will grant you rewards until you deplete the bonus. Consider that as a daily quest, which is granted automatically to you without the annoyance of you rushing to a zone to claim it. You know how tiresome it is to just rush from one zone to the next, picking up dailies, so take advantage of it. Many new players don't even know, but masteries affect quest rewards. Always remember to select your masteries into one of the branching trees for your class to maximize your drop potential and receive the item you wish. It will be awkward for you to start receiving some swords or armors while being a hunter or a mage, so before trying to mix and match your masteries, try to specialize into one tree first. I get it, you're an introvert, like me, who doesn't want to socialize by selling crafted goods or rush through the auction house to get rich. My advice? Collect everything that drops and sell it later. Why? Because you may not get as rich if you craft a very much needed item for someone to buy, but you will still have enough gold that you won't need to spend at least until the first 50 levels. That's how I roll so far. And it's worked out pretty well so far. Seriously, being a villager or being a hero, you still need those loyal community subjects. Uh, uh, I mean people, people to play with. <laughs> How did that slip? <clears throat> so try to communicate with others, they are community, I'm a community, you're a community, so a big massive community. Make your level 1 character and start spamming worldwide channel. I mean, start talking with everyone and build some relationships. Ask for help, join the forums, and search for all the events happening. Villagers and heroes can really give you the wrong impressions in the first few zones, mainly because everyone is on the worldwide channel and on Endgame by now. You may feel lonely, but trust me when I say that we're all here for you. If someone accidentally clicks that button and supports me on Patreon, this proud warrior can continue the fight. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Yeah, that was a strong message. Do it!